Hi, everybody. Welcome to Sketch Party. Everybody got their tea? Did everybody just pull their tea bag out of their teacup on accident like I did? Great. Glad to hear it. What's up, Jerry? Jade, good to see you. Hey, it's time to party. Yep, party with our teacups. How you guys doing? <laughs> well, hello there. So if you're new to Sketch Party, this is just a fun little chill hour that we're going to have together where we are going to draw with Adobe Fresco. It's going to be super cool. And let me know, chat, if any of you have ever used Fresco before, if you're familiar. It's a drawing and painting app. Uh, it's free. You can get it on your iPad, um, all of your mobile machines. So it's super cool. Let me know if you've used it before. What's up, Ashi? Shauna says I should make some tea, but I might make an espresso. Ooh, I got some cold brew waiting for me after this stream. It's very exciting. So again, I'm Kathleen. You might have already seen me this morning. I hosted the Daily Creative Challenge at 9 a.m. Seems like a year ago, but it was just a couple hours ago uh, for Photoshop. And now I'm going to take you into a little bit of illustration. So let me know if you're new here. Let me give you a shout out. And let's clear this. Get this going. So the way that sketch party works is it is a party. It is particip participatory, participatory, <laughs> participatory, um, where you are going to help me make some decisions. We're going to play some party games. Basically, you're going to tell me what to draw and over the next hour. And then at the same time tomorrow, we're going to draw together. Julia Kathleen content. Yes, that's me. That's me. I'm going to move this teacup before it ruins my table. Nice little break. Content break. All right, there we go. So as you can see, I have some flowers here on my iPad and this is Adobe Fresco. You can use photographs in it. Um, I have some flower options and if you have been playing Animal Crossing as much as I have, you might recognize these flowers. These are some of the flowers that you can have on your island. So we have pansies in the top left. We have wind flowers in the top right, or I think they're also called anemones, Japanese anemones. I've been learning a lot about these Animal Crossing flowers. And then in the bottom left, we have cosmos. And bottom right, we have lilies. So this is the part of the show where you get to tell me what kind of flowers I'm gonna be drawing for the next hour. Then after you tell me what kind of flowers I'm going to draw, you're going to tell me what colors I'm going to use. I don't know if we're going to get to colors today because we only have an hour. We might. Probably will. I'm pretty fast. Uh, but if we don't get to colors today, we will get to them tomorrow. So I am going to just use my handy dandy Apple pencil. I'm going to make a new layer and I am going to write oh, with a much smaller brush. A. B, C, or D. What flowers do you want me to draw? Animal Crossing, yes. I was gonna do like my favorite villagers, but I was like, not everyone plays Animal Crossing, but everybody loves flowers, right? Aaron says I've been so hooked on Animal Crossing lately. Jonas says I am new. Hello, Jonas, thanks for being here. Have I made any hybrid flowers yet? I still need to get roses and cosmos. Hey, I got cosmos. Um, I don't have any roses though. I've gotten a couple hybrids. I've gotten like pink, pink cosmos and blue windflowers and some orange pansies. All right, we've got our votes coming in. So yes, in the chat, just give me an A, B, C, or D. I see three Cs, also three Ds, four Ds. Ooh, people are liking the lilies. Another C. Steven says B, please. So he did say please. C has a nice composition. Yeah, and I'm not going to copy the exact image. That's just my reference. And I'll show you another way to look at reference with Fresco too while, uh, when we get started, which is pretty cool. Yeah, so don't look at the composition, just the flowers. What kind of flowers should I draw? Also, let it be known that I've never drawn any of these flowers before. I like drawing floral, so I think I'll be okay, but... So it's the first time, first time stream for me. I'm seeing a lot of C's now. Jonathan says A, Jerry says A or D. I think it's between the cosmos and the lilies, everybody. All right, between C and D, what are we thinking? I'm gonna bump up the music a little bit while we do this and get some, some jams going in here. Maybe, oh, my mouse is upside down. 
Aaron says A. Sam says C and D. You gotta pick one, my man. You gotta pick one. Andre says A. And we can always, like, tomorrow, I'll do the one maybe that we, uh, that's the second place winner for today. Gwen says, I like B too. <laughs> you like the colors of C and the shapes of D. All right. Okay, so what if you're going to go with C? Ah, oh, she's going to change her mind to D? Ah. Hmm. You love the vividness of C. Is that an English word? Yeah, totally. The insides of A are cool. Yeah, these might be uh, African pansies. Very pretty. All right, we're going to go with lilies for today. I'm seeing D's. I think I love D. Okay, knowledge. We'll do D. We'll do lilies today, and they're going to be lots of different colors. They're not going to be white or only white. Um, but I'm going to focus on the lines first. So we will start with lilies. Thanks, everybody. Appreciate that. Now it is time to choose our colors. So these are the same colors that we actually had last sketch party, which was two weeks ago. Seems like forever ago. <laughs> Ashi, you pick. No, you pick. Okay, we're going with lilies. But now, which color palette should we go with? This is the color palette for the stems, for the blossoms, for the petals, for the stamen. I don't know, for all of it. The pistols. <laughs> and it doesn't have to be representational. Like, we could go with B and have no green whatsoever in our flowers. We could go with D for that. Actually, the only one that has green is A. So help me pick. What color palette should I use? Jan says D, C... C, another C. We did C two weeks ago, so maybe we'll have a theme. Jade says D. Hmm. I have a favorite in my mind, and I'm wondering if anybody is going to pick it. Maybe that gives you a guess that nobody has picked it yet. <laughs> Ashi says C. Alex says C. Okay, we might be going with... Oh, Steven says D, please. He did say please. Oh, B, Greg. Greg, that's my favorite too. I love B. B's so pretty. But I'm seeing more for C, so I think we're going to go for C this time around. So we're going with lilies in this color palette. Cool, and that's the color palette we used two weeks ago. So now we have a little consistency to our projects. You knew it, Greg, you knew it. You think B is the least predictable predictable colors? Maybe that's why I liked it so much, Ralph. Maybe. All right, so I'm gonna grab this layer out of this group. Maybe? Is that how you do it? <laughs> Come on, Fresco, be my friend. Maybe we'll just ungroup these layers. Ungroup them. We're going to delete a bunch of them so that we just have the ones that we want remaining. And then we will get started with our sketch. All right, let's get rid of these. Turn this on, turn these off. All right, so I mentioned that there's a really cool way that you can look at reference while you're using Fresco. You can bring your reference into Fresco and by reference, I mean like the pictures that you're looking at to help you understand what you're going to be drawing. So the lilies, what are you using to draw on? I've got an iPad Pro with an Apple Pencil and a table, if you're literally asking what I'm drawing on. <laughs> uh, but let me show you a way, another way that you can get reference in here. Say you're on an iPad, you could just open up your Safari. You can see I was doing a lot of flower research. Let's look up lily flower. And I want an image that tells me how the lily blossoms or petals react with each other. Like, is it just one stem with one flower? Are there multiple flowers on one stem? Right here, this is artificial, but it might help us understand. It looks like there's multiple flowers coming off that one stalk. 
so that's helpful. Let's find another one that is helpful for our reference. I'm going to go back. Dive into Google with me. Ooh, this one on the left that's just the one stem helps me understand how they look. That's awesome. So many of the ones that aren't real are the ones that are more descriptive. Which one do I have? That one. Okay, cool. So let's get... Maybe this one tells us a little bit more about the leaves. So I could save this to my photos and actually bring it in, or I can bring Fresco in here and look at them side by side. So if I move my Safari over, I can have, not that, this open to tell me about how the stems work and I can also be looking at this reference. It's pretty helpful, right? Thanks, Sam, for the for the social plug. If you want to follow me on Instagram, that's where I post more illustration-y stuff. You'll see a lot on my Behance's uh, Daily Creative Challenge goodness. All right, so let's get to sketching. I kind of wanted this to look like maybe a little bit of a botanical sketch. So just like a specimen drawing. I'm gonna move this here. I might even rotate this so it's vertical. We're done. We're good to go. Looks good. Thanks, Ashi. And thank you, Sam, for the Instagram link. What are you guys up to today? Just watching lots of Adobe Live? We've been on the, on the stream all day. I think Shauna started off the day at 8 a.m., Ooh. And then we have more streams coming up after. I think Ben Marriott's on after me to do some awesome motion graphics. All right, first thing I want to do is make a new layer. And I'm actually going to swipe right on Safari for now since we don't really need the reference at the moment. And that way I can focus more on my sketch. Let's choose a nice sketching brush because I need to kind of get my wrist going, get my arm going, warm up. Warming up is really important, and I think some people think that you don't have to do it once you get enough experience as a, an artist or an illustrator, but you should definitely always warm up. It's like when you first wake up and your voice is kind of scratchy and you try and like sing or talk and it doesn't sound as good, you gotta do those warm ups. So let's go to sketching. We can just choose the pencil. Or we could look at some other brush groups. Maybe dry media. I like sketching with something a little thicker. I feel like I can get some uh, dynamic lines and shapes in there. All right, you've been popping in streams all day intermittently. About to sketch along doing some practice. Yay, Shauna. I'm glad to hear that. Hey, Shauna, what were you working on this morning? It looked like you were doing a couple like different small illustrations. The hay bale. It was super cute. Greg says I'm working from home. Nice, Greg. Hope it's been a good work day for you. So let's start sketching. One thing about these lilies is they are on kind of like one single stalk. And I know I want to include some of these like unbloomed pieces. So maybe they can be like around here. And I might do this sketch and decide I don't like the composition at all. Happens all the time and it's nothing to be ashamed of. All right, and then maybe I want like one main lily, like right here. And then maybe like a smaller one here. So this will be the main one. I think I want it to be kind of opening to the right. And again, I'm just sketching. This is real rough, right? Check this out. That is a true sketch. And I don't want this to be too curvy because I've noticed that these lily stalks are kind of rigid. 
You were doing studies using a site called MapCrunch, which tosses you into random places on Google Earth and did studies from different places. That's genius. I love that. You were manning Adobe Airlines as the pilot and the flight attendant. Oh my gosh, and the resident artist. Handing out drinks, handing out iPads. All right, so I like this for now. Then I also need to add in a couple leaves. And this is just a rough sketch and I probably will add more details as we go along. I'm gonna make this color palette a lot smaller so that we can really utilize the whole space of our composition. Another thing that I like to think about is if this is gonna go like on Instagram and it's gonna be in a square, then I might wanna draw in a square format and really try and fill up that square. Not fill it up like to the edges, but take note of how my work fills the space and make sure that there's nothing that looks too empty. F says I did some yard work earlier, now just watching streams, hanging out. That's great. Do you have any experience with Wacom on iPad? I have a Wacom Bamboo Fine Line and somehow can't get used to drawing with it on the iPad. Oh, like Wacom Styli. I've never used a pen, a Wacom pen on an iPad. So it's hard for me to say. I usually really like the Wacom pens though. Hmm, it might also be because Wacom usually has like a textured screen and iPad's really glossy, glassy. My iPad has a filter on it, so it feels more like paper. Paper-like, as you could say. All right, I'm going to turn this sketch layer's opacity down. And now let's do a little bit more of a refined sketch. So we could even choose one of our other colors. And really go in here. Ralph, I'm sorry to hear that you're having trouble, though, getting used to it. Whoops. New layer, please. So I'm going to stay zoomed out for the most part here. Since we're still working on a sketch, and then once I have my lines really kind of decided where I want them, that's when you can zoom in and not have to worry about messing up your composition or getting too focused in one area. Looking at these buds, they kind of have a bottom here. They almost really do look like a bud where you can see the difference between the different uh, leaves that are going to open. I think one of the most magical things in the world is when a lily finally opens. Maybe this one is starting to kind of peel up a little bit. There we go. I dig this textured brush. It's super nice. It's a Bluetooth pen made for iPad, but I think the iPad pencil suits the job better in this case. Not sure if it's being asked, but what brush are you using? It's looking nice. Thank you. It's just from the a dry media set, the Conte Crayon. I'm actually going to favorite it so we can come back to it if we need to. One super cool thing about Fresco is you can add your own brushes or say you made some brushes in Capture. You could add them there or you make your own brushes in Photoshop. You can use them. But that also means that you can upload the Kyle Webster Mega Pack uh, on Fresco. So with a CC subscription, you have access to thousands of Kyle Webster's brushes and you can use them all in fresco. Keep working on these. I really like this Conte crayon because it reacts super well to different pressures. So I'll show you over here on the right. Really light pressure, harder pressure, lighter. I love that really vast range. Makes drawing fun, as it should be. Alrighty, let's get one of these little leaves going on in here somewhere. I like how they kind of floof off. Floof off. Nice. Okay, so let's add our right side blossom. 
I want it to be more vertical, I think, than my initial sketch. Oops, double finger tap to go back. Super easy to undo your mistakes. And then let's start adding this blossom in. I love how curly the leaves get. They almost look like ribbons. And by leaves, I mean petals. <laughs> There we go. Maybe this one's kind of curling back towards us. And there's going to be some coming off behind this blossom. Blossom. <laughs> and they have these cool little doodads in the middle. Nice. I like it, I like it, although this space right here is looking a little bit cramped. So let's use our lasso tool. I'm just gonna draw a selection around here, because remember, this is still a sketch. You can transform it, rotate it, bring it down, and allow it to fill the space a little bit better. Cool. Deselect. Let's use the eraser, erase that, go back to our brush, reconnect it. Perfect, and I'm gonna increase the size of this blossom. Maybe rotate a little bit that way, make it a little bit bigger. Cool. Alrighty, so we have our right side blossom. Now we can work on this one over here. What's up, Steve? How you doing? And Flynn Tracy. How are you? How are things across the pond? Alrighty, let's get started on this big bad lily. We want it to be pretty open, but facing towards the left. So I'm kind of looking at these down here. Show you what I'm trying to think of right now. This one is facing pretty much directly at us, and this one's facing more in the direction that I'm interested in having the one that I'm going to draw face. So I'm going to reference this one a little bit more than this one, but it'll end up being kind of a conglomeration between the two. You're making this look so easy. I've been looking for the right tablet so I can get into drawing. Hey, Aaron, it is easy. The only way to draw is to draw. You know? <laughs> I'm annoyed at myself for saying that. So let's start getting these petals in here. We'll start with this right one. And we want it to look like it is folding back. And then these back here are gonna be a little more tough because they're folding away from us, so they're gonna kinda just look like little nubs. Off topic, but your blouse looks really cute. Thank you. I already wore it for one stream today, but I was like, I'm gonna wear it again. I'm an outfit repeater. It is the same day, so I can't be expected <laughs> to change my clothes. Can I? I don't know. <laughs> the writer writes, it's true. Um, maybe the stem on the right is a little too curvy for a lily. Hey, you're totally right about that. I will go back to that after I finish working on this guy a little bit. Thank you. Anthony, Delo Delo, how you doing? All right, I was talking about nubs. Oh yes, we're doing these back here. So we have this one. And we'll put another petal behind it. And we'll put these two shooting up in the back. Now notice how when I'm drawing something that's a little bit further back, I'm not pressing as hard. That helps the viewer know like, oh, this is behind something else. This is not as important for me to look at. This can stay kind of vague too, because it is gonna be covered by these little guys, you know? Anybody know the names of those? Is that the pistol? 
<laughs> You're an outfit repeater per week. Heck yeah, Sam. Repeat those outfits. It's good for the environment. All right, let's get one of these petals coming up here and folding down. We don't want them to look too droopy. You can always rotate your canvas if that's helpful, which is helpful for me right now. Then I'm gonna use my touch shortcut to erase with my current brush. Here we go. All right, perfect. Let's draw another one. It's one cool thing about flowers, it's a, it's a lot of repetition of the same shapes, kind of layering them over and over again. Hmm, this one's giving me a little trouble. How do I want to draw you? Maybe I want to draw you like this. Yes, that feels better. I find that when I'm having trouble drawing something, it's usually because I need to rotate my canvas and figure out a better solution. All right, building these up. Cool. There you go. Steven says, I have dyspraxia and it has causes problems with hand-eye coordination. With physical medium, my drawing is at a four-year level, year old level. I find drawing digitally much easier. Wow, Steven, that's really interesting. I wonder if it's because when you're drawing digitally, there's like a specific way that the tools work and you, you know that's how they're going to work. I'm interested to know though, what makes it easier for you? Shauna says, I buy multiples of the basics I like. I wore the same outfit two days in a row as, re as a result last week. No shame. I wear my pajamas as clothes often. They're comfortable and cute. Why not? All right, we've got our lily going on strong. Now we're going to come back to this stem because I think it was Aaron pointed out that it was a little too wavy. So let's see if we can just carve with the eraser and make it look a little less wavy. I love thinking about drawing as like carving, more sculptural. It helps me think uh, through it a little bit easier. I think I think in shapes a little bit more than lines, if that makes sense. Which when I was in art school, there was a, this specific designation between like, are you a painterly drawer or are you a um, mark maker? Meaning, do you draw whoops, in shapes or do you draw in lines? And I found that I often drew in shapes, or that's how it made more sense in my mind. All right, we'll go back in with the brush and just clean this up a little bit. They're at more of an obtuse angle and less of a curve. And when things do hit those angles, I'm noticing in the photograph down here, the stem gets a little bit thicker where the angle hits. Just like that. Nice, you can see that up here too. <laughs> Ash, you have pants on at all times? Good. I'm glad. <laughs> I don't think I'm ever going to wear jeans again. That is, a, that is a stance that I am taking. I never liked jeans though, so I'm not, not really surprised with myself. All right, thicken it up here. Have it down there. Looks good. <laughs> Sam says I wear jeans 90% of the time, which some people find odd. That's like Gus or Adobe Live for those of you who don't know Gus. 100% all the time wears jeans. Not all the time, but definitely wears jeans or pants that I would consider uncomfortable. I don't understand how he does it. 
All right, let's add some of these little leaf details. These leaves are like little blades of grass. I like them. Maybe we can get one to kind of interact down here a little bit. <laughs> like I'm coaxing the drawing to do what I want it to do. Maybe we can get it to do this. It's my world. I make the decisions. Alrighty. Pretty. I would love some lilies on my Animal Crossing island. They're so pretty. So this is a little bloom that's about to happen. Maybe we can get a... No, I don't think we need a leaf in there. This looks good. Let's go for it. Got a spot. Your jeans have some nice flex to them. They got a little elasticine in there. Rotating the canvas is a great tip. When they introduced this to Photoshop a while ago, it made working with different angles so much easier. Oh my gosh, I know. Especially when you rotate it and you can just hit it or escape to have it go back to how it's supposed to go. Amazing. Mina Jer, hello. I'm new here. Can I join you guys? Come sit at our table. Here, let's take a tea break. I'm going to get my teacup. Everybody, take a sip. Welcome, Mina Jer. Good to see you. If you're wondering, which I knew you were, drinking cinnamon, rooibos tea. <laughs> rooibos? Rooibos? Robus? Robot? What y'all drinking on? Okay, we have our sketch. Yes. Now we can go in with more of those shapes and really build this bad boy out. I'll show you what I mean by my shapes. So we will turn off the initial sketch. I have a new layer. And let's see if we should stick with this brush or go in with a different one. <laughs> A lettering brush actually might be beautiful for this. <laughs> Thanks everyone for welcoming them in so nicely. So I'm going to put this layer below my sketch and I'm going to paint in with a color that's very different from my sketch. So here we go. Let's grab the, ooh, the hot pink maybe? We can do that. So now when I paint, it goes underneath my sketch and we can fill Make it a little bit smaller. Fill this in a little bit. I'll show you what I mean about shapes in just a sec. Actually, maybe it'd be better to show you in one of these little bloom, bloom blossoms. Undo, 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 undo. Here we go. I'm going to fill in one of these shapes as best I can pretty quick. Keep it rough. And then I'm going to use my touch shortcut. Zoom in, make my brush a little bit smaller. And clean up this edge just a bit. Using kind of sculptural longer strokes. Whoops. Sometimes the touch shortcut doesn't want to cooperate with you. <laughs> and now when I turn off my sketch layer, I have this nice large shape. And I could even just change my blend mode to clear. Make my brush even smaller. And use this. To make almost like an ink stamp look. I'll show you. We're going to erase everything but the main lines, almost like we're carving away at a, at a printmaking piece. Okay, zoom in a little bit here. Erase this a bit. Erase this a bit. 
So now when I turn off the sketch, we have almost like we carved a stamp and stamped it on. Cody Bear, good to see you, friends. How are you? So let's do that for the rest. I'm gonna go through here pretty quick. Oops, we don't want clear, we want normal. It's okay to be messy. All right, then change our blend mode to clear. Decrease the size of our brush a bit and create our stamp. You might wonder why don't why don't you just draw the lines? But I like this because it gives you that wobbly kind of uneven and unknown texture. Like I'm not exactly sure how this is going to look until I turn off the sketch layer. I like that. I think flowers are pretty enough. They don't have to be perfect. All right, let's turn off the sketch, see how it looks. Cool, I like it. Looks like bunny ears right now. Cody Bear, have you been streaming recently? Maybe on the Behance? Super cool. Hope to see you around more. Let's change our blend mode back to normal. And if you've never used the clear blend mode, it's literally just acts as an eraser, but you get to use the same texture as your brush. Let's just fill these in super quick. We'll do one of these too. I'm gonna be here until 325. And I believe we've got Ben, like I said, coming up. Do some cool MoGraph. Change our blend mode back to clear. There we go. Decrease the size of our brush. I think it was about 25 when I've been decreasing it. These stems get pretty thin. Really liked how these stems looked in the sketch, so I'm going to try and stay a little bit closer to the original. There we go. You've been enjoying it? Cool, Cody, I'm glad. Very glad. All right, clean this up. Don't want it to be too smooth, so we can really chisel in here. Get out of here, touch shortcut. And there we go. Make my brush whittle, itty bitty. Get some detail in there. All right, let's turn off our sketch, see how it's looking. Cool, this looks a little bit rough in here. Oops. So I might go back in here, normal. Clean that up a bit. There we go. Cool. Our print, our fake print is coming along very nicely. We could also use this to make an almost like Rizo graph or Rizo print look. Maybe we could scooch this pink layer over a little bit so it looks like it was actually printed. That'd be sweet. Make the brush a bit bigger. can't neglect to get some of that good texture in here so I shouldn't press too hard there we go and this is where we really get to decide how these flowers look because the sketch is still sketchy so we get to decide where the lines are etc etc just gonna fill in this whole one maybe we can add some of lines of our own Increase the size of the brush. Really get this filled in. All right, let's clear it out. Ian, hello. Ashi, what are you not liking? My drawing? <laughs> Please don't say my drawing. 
tell me how you feel. Moving down here. Ooh, that was a nice kind of scratchy texture, right? Looking good. Oops. Going out for exercise. You're not liking that? What do you usually stay inside for exercise? Maybe exercise just isn't your thing. Carve this out a little bit. I'm super glad that I got this textured screen protector on my iPad recently. It makes all the difference. Might leave some of those lines. Cool, looking good. What's up, Loretta? Good to see you. No, you're doing a great job. Thank you, Ashi. Thanks very much. I wasn't expecting to do this um, printmaking look when I first started the stream, but it kind of just happened and I'm going for it. What the drawing wants, the drawing gets. All right, so this is where we were gonna add in our own little lines. What I mean by that is we get to decide like if there's some hatch marks coming out of here to designate shadow. Maybe one right here too. Maybe one here. So it really looks like I took a real tool and carved this. At least that's what it's supposed to look like. Yes, nice. Oh, you worry about coronavirus when you go outside. I see. Yeah, hopefully people around you are being very careful. We live next to a really big park and it's kind of 50-50 if people are actually actually trying to distance themselves. We certainly are. <laughs> we jump in the bushes sometimes <laughs> to uh, avoid people who would just come busting through, doing their thing. We're like, ah, <laughs> get out of the way. <laughs> oh, Loretta, I think you might be um, watching in the past. Where'd you get the screen protector? I just got my screen protector on Amazon and it's not as good as the real paper like. I will tell you that. The screen protector I have is much more like sandpaper <laughs> and less like paper, which makes me worried about my, my pencil. But it's doing okay so far. I'm not pressing too, too hard. All right, let's keep it going. So we wanted to add some more of those little details on this petal. These little stripes. You can really hear the texture. I know, is it kind of like ASMR-y? I'm looking at the tip. It looks all right. Oh, thank you, Sam, for helping Loretta. <laughs> I'm glad to see that Loretta is um, participating, though. Makes me happy. We'll get her caught up here. What do you like to listen to while you're working? If I'm doing something as freeform as this, I feel like I could listen to anything. Like I could listen to a podcast, I could listen to a movie, any kind of music. But if I'm actually thinking, like if I'm in the sketching stage, it's hard for me to listen to anything. Get distracted. When I'm trying to use my brain. Turn off our sketch, whoops. 
See how it's looking? Ooh, it really does look like a, a print. Like I carved it with my own hands. Is there an Apple Pencil sharpener if the tip gets blunt? <laughs> I wish. No, they're like, pay us a million dollars for a new tip. <laughs> You're listening to me while working. Oh, and for my next song, here's the song of the Apple Pencil. Thank you. <laughs> that did nothing. Let's keep on working down here. Remember, I'm kind of going along these purple lines and treating those like my sketch lines, and then I'm carving away whatever I can without being too careful, because like I said, I want it to look like I carved it. But definitely using it as a guide. There we go. Nice. You're listening in here and watching and working. Nice. <laughs> Loretta, welcome. Glad to have you live here in the now. How's it going? I do that sometimes, actually. I'll start like commenting on the live stream and then have that dreadful moment where I'm like, oh, I'm not totally caught up yet. <laughs> and I've just been talking about something they were talking about an hour ago. I've totally been there. But thanks for joining. Glad to have you. All right, let's take one more peeky at how these outlines are looking. I could even change it all to be black and it would really look like it was a print. Cool. Let's finish off this little bit. What's up, boy fruit? Scratches in D minor by Kathleen Martin. It's got to have a much longer name than that. It's like Etude 7, Scratching Arpeggio, featuring Adobe Live, recorded Spring of 1776 by Kathleen Martin. <laughs> Right, we're almost done with this section. And then I'll show you what I mean by having like a little risograph look to this. I'll finish off this little bit actually. I kind of liked how it was very dark compared to the other ones, so I'm not gonna carve away too much. I like how it was a little filled in. All right. So we have our sketch here. Now I can move this layer a little bit to the right. So it looks like it's like off register. And then we could even make a solid fill layer beneath. Maybe using this. Pixel please. Ooh, it vibrates. Ah, it hurts. Do not like how that looks. <laughs> Let's try black or really dark blue. Ooh, that's kind of cool, right? All right, let's keep going. I only have a couple more minutes. I'm gonna be hitting out of here in about five minutes, allowing Ben to come on, but I will be back tomorrow. So we could even do more of this. We could do another flower in a different style, maybe. Maybe not this printmaking one. Let's move this sketch back into alignment though. Here we go. Oh, no, undo. <laughs> cool, we still gotta do this piece. I neglected to do it. Let's go back to our original pink. Oops. Blend mode is still clear. We want it to be normal. And we want it to be on this layer. So 
And remember, we fill it in rough and then we carve away. your secret identity your real name is your secret identity i guess that's like clark kent y'all if you don't know boyfruit aka david is a very 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 talented artist very skilled and he's been around since the twitch days which is five years it's pretty crazy anybody else been around since the twitch days sam has for sure me me has cool we did it your passport still says boyfruit i bet your video game characters are all named boyfruit frederick is home now at least i can have a look at how kathleen is sketching take a look take a gander we're making printmaking-esque illustrations kind of like a wood block or a litho. Let's fill this in. Get these added in here. And thanks again, everybody, for being here and helping me decide which colors and which flowers to illustrate. It means a lot when you participate. It helps my helps make my job a lot easier. Fill some pink in over here. Raise his hand. Sean has been around. Sean is definitely an OG. Cody's been around since the beginning. The Genesis. I really do like this initial sketch I did in the purpley indigo. It has a nice character to it. I'm filling in all these shapes so I can then carve away, but I don't think I'm going to have time to totally finish this. So I'm just trying to get as many pinks in here as I can. So if I need to finish it off stream, I can do that a little more easily. In about a minute, I'll show you where we started and what we did and then where we're going to go tomorrow because I will be back 2.30 tomorrow afternoon, actually at 9 a.m. tomorrow morning. <laughs> I'll be back. For a daily creative challenge and then you'll see me again at 2 30. just can't get rid of me Alrighty, we started turn that off turn that on with a super light and gestural sketch of some lilies we had some reference material i then went along with this sketch a little bit more final and now we are working on these final lines that are supposed to kind of replicate uh printmaking this right side is not done yet uh, so that's just kind of the rough line. So I still need to carve in on it a little bit. What's the carving tool? It's just my brush. I'm using my brush as an eraser and erasing it to look like I'm carving. Uh, and then I'll be back to maybe do a different flower in a different style tomorrow, maybe in a different color palette too. I will let you all decide. But for now, I'm going to let Ben Marriott come up next for some good motion graphics uh, and some awesome tutorials. He's a great educator. So stick around for that, and I will see you tomorrow morning. Thank you, everybody. I appreciate you being here. Goodbye.